President Biden will propose a large-scale tax increase tomorrow. He'll also call for giving billions more to the IRS to make sure that rich people and large corporations pay all that they owe. Bloomberg's learned that the plan would raise the top tax rate to 39.6% for those making at least $400,000. Over the next five or 10 year period, you will, at a practical level, see less investment. And the, the only way to make that whole is if the government then takes all that money and all of a sudden allocates it from their own coffers back into the economy. And we know that that's not going to happen well. Unfortunately, the setup is that, you know, you're going to really impact entrepreneurship. And then, I, and then I wonder to myself, what was the actual goal of this? You, you may not be thinking about the capital gains rate, but it's implicit in the returns that you're expecting for the risk and the time you're going to take. And, you know, we've been trained to feel that rate. And if you double that rate from 20 to 40, I suspect that there's a lot of people whose risk tolerance changes and they're going to feel their after-tax gains differently and they'll wonder to themselves, is this worth it? And then I think what happens as a result is entrepreneurship drags. I don't know if anybody's done uh, an analysis, but I suspect part of the reason why America is such a, you know, an amazing like sink for capital, right? It absorbs capital all around the world is that you've created incentives that get people very excited because they think they can get rewarded. If you take those rewards away, I think the implications are much bigger than just the cap gains rates here. Because as the people change their behavior, then the capital formation pools outside of the United States change their behavior. And the whole thing has a knock on effect. And it was more muted in Clinton. It was less muted in 78. It basically didn't exist in the 40s and 50s. But it is a huge force today. I mean, like we are an indebted nation that owes money to all kinds of countries around the world, including China, we're supposed to generate growth and sort of pay it back. So when you think about like, so for example, like, you know, you would say, okay, who are the folks that we're talking about? There can be entrepreneurs that are building companies. Again, they're never selling. So they're never going to pay these taxes. Like it's not the case that Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg is all of a sudden going to write a $40 billion check because that's, that's not how much they make. That may be how much they're worth, right. but they will never sell a single share unless they have to, to fund some other project. And then, and then you look at somebody else, like maybe you say, oh, well, you know, the people that manage money, like, let's go after those guys because like those guys shouldn't be, you know, rich. But then the problem is those guys are already paying W-2 income. They're already paying nominal income tax rates. That's how the entire hedge fund industry works right now. You know, um, you get paid in current income. Um, and so... Okay, so you're not getting their money because they're already paying at the prevailing rate. So again, this goes back to if you actually trace the problem and see who it affects, it's these folks that are in the middle that are actually putting the money to work, that are trying to invest in things that now have a very different return profile. And you're right, the core business that they do, they may still keep doing, but then all of the incremental things in the future that they want to do, they won't do. For example, look at all of the talk right now about how everybody needs to stand up, you know, more angel investing, more minority investing, more women GPs, all of this stuff. Well, all of the folks, let's just be honest, all the folks that were in a position to put money into those folks are now 50% on a dollar rated basis poorer if this thing passes. And I bet you what they're going to do is they're not going to cut their allocations in Sequoia. They're going to cut their allocations to all these other folks. I'm telling you, I know it doesn't seem likely, but I think on a marginal basis, this will be an incentive to spend. And the reason is that it's a very frustrating idea for somebody to think about putting money in the ground, especially a sophisticated investor, um, at a rate of return that just changed in half. And so from my perspective, I would be more likely to spend because I would rather just YOLO the money than I would rather put it into the ground because I would be worried that that could then get taken away from me. It could also change even further and further. And that I think that's a very frustrating idea. Breaking yeah. news, uh, Biden has announced uh, his capital gains tax hike. I don't think this impacts any of us, but Biden will propose almost doubling the capital gains tax rate for wealthy individuals from 20% to, not 25, not 28, 39.6%. Let's take a step back and actually see the forest from the trees. And the forest from the trees is that I don't think Biden... Um, thinks that 
it's a credible plan um, in as much as I probably think uh, he needs, you know, this is like it's performative um, because it was a lot larger. The number, the headline number was a lot larger than um, what people were whispering was going to be the number, right? It was supposed to be like in the low 30s or maybe kind of like, you know, 33, 34. Um, and then all of a sudden, like to come out of 39.6, I think it's almost like, okay, he's he's giving the pound of flesh to uh, the the left kind of like woke mob of the Democratic Party who probably doesn't understand how capitalism works in the first place and doesn't care because they're not they're not participants in it. Now, the, the, my reaction is, I don't think it's going to pass. I think it's going to be really tough to get done. And I think it probably, you know, maybe maybe there's a watered down version, but this version, I, I, I'm not super worried about. And then it just comes back to the same thing over and over. The the fewer the number of people that get to participate in the growth and see the upside, the more there are that just wants to just kind of you know, tear it all down. And so I don't know, it's just yet another signal that we have these structural issues to fix. It's not reasonable that a few people get super rich and everybody else gets left on the sidelines. I also think that these kinds of bills are actually a shot across the bow to a handful of people that are not playing by the rules anymore. We're not towing the line and standing in line and saying, I'm clearly demarcating myself as a Democrat. I'm clearly demarcating myself as a Republican. I'll play nice. Because think of what's really happened in, in, in COVID. You've had a massive explosion in D to C distribution, right? Think of the platform that we've created out of nothing. Think of the platform that Elon Musk has out of nothing. And if you if you take that writ large, it's extremely disruptive to people who is all about controlling the message which allows them to control power. And I think that a lot of these rules are these ways of almost like counterpunching against it, but they're ineffective. I, what I would encourage all of us to do is actually become completely Zen and instead continue to aggregate distribution power, because that will replace the one and a half percent tax that you have to pay. Because if you can talk to people directly and tell them your version of the truth and allow them to underwrite their version of the truth against what you said, that is modern power. And that's worth a lot more than the money that you'll pay. And I remember coming to the United States and seeing my after my take home pay my first paycheck. And I was shocked because I was like, you know, I was paying maybe 36% all blended in federal and local at the time in, or state at the time in California. And slowly, slowly, it's creeping up with with if you play it out today where we are, plus New York State just passed laws, you're going to be sort of in the 50 to 55%, almost upwards of 56% for certain folks. And maybe the answer is that's the right thing. Um, but I think we have to acknowledge that there's going to be a bunch of unintended consequences. So maybe the intended consequence is to actually create more um, equality between the richest few and, you know, uh, not even the poorest, frankly, because but it'll just be the richest few and the the next richest few, quite honestly, because like, you know, the investing class is still a small number of people. Um, but the unintended consequences of that decision, I think, is what exactly what David said, which is that over the next five or 10 year period, you will, at a practical level, see less investment. And the, the only way to make that whole is if the government then takes all that money and all of a sudden allocates it from their own coffers back into the economy. And we know that that's not going to happen well, right? That's just going to be riddled with waste and graft and corruption. So unfortunately, the setup is that, you know, you're going to really impact entrepreneurship. And then, I, and then I wonder to myself, by the way, guys, like, what was the actual goal of this? Meaning there was 20 or 30 guys that were just making so much money on their equity but then that's then then we need to blame like the these lists like the Forbes billionaires list because those are inaccurate because a lot of these stuff is like un um, realized realized paper gains yeah <laughs> right and so th they're not they're not paying any capital gains because they haven't sold anything and most of these guys that are uber uber rich you know have no desire to sell because it's for them it's a control issue to sell You, you may not be thinking about the capital gains rate, but it's implicit in the returns that you're expecting for the risk and the time you're going to take. Breaking yeah. news, uh, Biden has announced uh, his capital gains tax hike. I don't think this impacts any of us. You've had a massive explosion in D to C distribution, right? Think of the platform that we've created out of nothing. And then I, and then I wonder to myself, by the way, guys, like, what was the actual goal of this? 